Hey everyone, I'm Tom. And I'm Kate. And welcome to another Mondays with the Mortons episode. This week we are coming to you from just south of Bend, Oregon. And we have been traveling the Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway for the last couple of weeks. The Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway stretches from Northern California up to kind of Central Oregon and it includes a whole bunch of really neat geological formations created by volcanoes. So this video we wanted to take the opportunity to tell you more about these amazing places that we've been visiting and the natural beauty that is created from this volcanic area. So the Scenic Byway visits a whole bunch of sites in the Southern Cascades. The Cascades range from British Columbia all the way down to Northern California and have a whole bunch of volcanoes in them. Some you're very familiar with like Mount St. Helens, Mount Baker, and these are part of the volcanic ring of fire which encompasses the entire Pacific Ocean. Due to the Pacific Plate subducting underneath the North American Plate, it's created all this volcanic activity up and down the coast, and that's where we see so many of these unique and awesome volcanic features come from. The Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway is 500 miles long and pretty much goes from volcano to volcano and includes three national parks and national monuments. Lassen Volcanic, Lava Beds, and Crater Lake. We started the drive just outside of Susanville, California, and that took us up into the higher elevation pine country, which was absolutely beautiful. And we camped at a national forest campground called Cave Campground, which was a short walk from a lava tube cave called Subway Cave, which you could walk through, and that was really cool. From there, we were able to visit Lassen Volcanic National Park, although only a part of it because there was still tons of snow there. Lassen Volcanic is named after Lassen Peak, which is a plug dome volcano, and it did erupt within the last century. Actually, maybe a little bit more. It was around 1914, 1915, and it was an incredible eruption and really put the place on the map as far as volcanic activity, a lot of national interest, and that's essentially why it became a national park. The other reason that this area is special is because it has all four types of volcanoes. So Mount Lassen was a plug dome volcano, but there's also shield volcanoes, cinder cones, and composite volcanoes all in one area. So Lassen is still very volcanically active and it does have some hydrothermal features similar to Yellowstone with its pools and its vents and things like that. Unfortunately we weren't able to make it there because it was still snowed in even in late June. They get that much snow up there. But we had a great time hiking the area and learning so much about volcanoes. Another thing we did is we visited Butte Lake, which is an area where lava had erupted and flowed across the ground and blocked a lake. There was a big lake and it flowed into the lake and split the lake in two, which was really cool. And where it had flowed from, it formed a cinder cone. It was about 700 feet tall and we got to hike to the top of it. The views were amazing. The hike was amazing, although it was kind of a two steps forward, one step back type hiking. Yeah. It was steep and very, very loose soil. Yeah, the cinder's really hard to walk through, but that was so cool because we actually got to go down into the cinder cone crater. The cinder cone erupted only 700 years ago, which makes it very recent geologic history, and you can still clearly see all the volcanic features. Barely anything has grown in that area yet at all. The view from the top is spectacular, and what there's what they call the painted dunes. Some of the cinders created these beautiful colors in these waves of dunes. Really, really neat place to visit. After Lassen Volcanic National Park, we headed north, and we, we didn't follow the scenic byway completely, but it goes by a whole bunch of other volcanic features like Bernie Falls, Deer Mountain, Whaleback Mountain, and the famous Mount Shasta, which you could practically see from anywhere in Northern California. Pretty much the whole drive, you can yeah. see Mount Shasta. Yeah, it was absolutely stunning. And we made our way up to Lava Bez National Monument. Now this place, we didn't really know what to expect, but we wanted to hit it anyway, and we camped at the Indian Well Campground right there in the park, and we were so pleasantly surprised to find that this national monument has tons of stuff to do. 
This area was formed from the Medicine Lake volcano, which is a huge volcano, and it caused a lot of lava tubes in the area. The Medicine Lake volcano is the largest volcano in the Cascade Range. You may think Mount St. Helens or any of the big ones, but it's actually the largest by surface area and volume. This area has had many, many lava flows, and a lot of them are very accessible and have these lava tubes, which are created when the lava flows across the surface, and it's very, very hot, but the surface air and even the ground below it cools it off and causes it to turn to stone, like basically icing over. But the center is still so hot, the lava is able to flow, and it creates basically a tube that it's flowing in. And once that lava flows out the other end, the lava tube will actually drain rain a lot of times and leave lava tubes. And this area has over 800 known lava tube caves, of which 24 are well developed, have ladders and paths, and the public can enter them. While we were there, we purchased this Lava Beds Caves booklet, which describes each of the caves that you can go into in great detail and includes maps of turns and heights of the caves so you know exactly what you're getting into. We did quite a few caves. One of them of note is called Catacombs, which actually goes more than a mile underground. You do have to do some crawling and stuff to get all the way to the end. We didn't make it all the way to the end, but uh, these this booklet is great to have so that if you take a turn you don't get lost down there which some people actually do. The caves are also unique too. Uh, there's Golden Dome which has this crazy bacteria on the ceiling that makes it look like it's covered in gold. There's Skull Cave where there's this big drop-off so a lot of animals would go in there and actually fall off and so there are bones down there still that you can see. Some caves have multiple tubes that are crossing and going over each other and it's just a ton of fun to explore. At the visitor center you can get flashlights if you don't have your own. We brought our own. It's critical to have really good light in the caves because they are pitch black if you don't have any light. But really fun to explore and definitely worth the visit there as well. The other reason that this area is significant is because it is the site of the Modoc War and it was where the Modoc Native Americans lived. There's actually a petroglyph point that is the largest, one of the largest uh, expanses of petroglyphs in the United States that is still preserved. Petroglyph Point is part of the National Monument. It's a separate unit that you have to drive out to, but it's definitely worth a visit as well. And they have a lot of information about the war. It was the, as Caitlin said, the only war fought between the Modocs and the U.S. Army. And the story is fascinating, but very sad. I'll let you look it up if you want, but um, it's very interesting to walk through history there and see it firsthand. After we did Lava Beds National Monument, we continued north into Oregon and went all the way up to Crater Lake, which was absolutely fantastic. We stayed at a boondocking spot just outside the park at Annie Creek Snow Park, which is actually a snowmobile parking lot where uh, people can come in the wintertime and ride their snowmobiles on miles and miles of trails in the National Forest. In the summertime, it is open to camping. It was a great spot for us to launch our day trips into Crater Lake. When we went up to Crater Lake, we were actually really surprised to find out that most of the park was still closed. It was snowed in, the north entrance was closed, and they had actually just opened the south entrance not too long before we got there. And snow still stood like 20 to 30 feet snow banks. Again, late June, crazy to see so much snow, but this is one of the snowiest places in the country. They average 530 inches a year, but they frequently see over 800 inches of snow in a season at Crater Lake. So, And this past winter, the winter of 2016-2017, was exceptionally snowy. Crater Lake is absolutely stunningly beautiful. It is the deepest lake in North America. And the clearest. The clearest in the world, actually. It holds the world record for the clearest water depth, being able to see down into it. And it, a lot of the clarity is because the water, no rivers come into this and no rivers leave. There is no sediment that makes its way into the lake because it sits in the caldera of a giant volcano. Now caldera means that the volcano 
actually collapsed in on itself. It was the giant Mount Mazama that probably looked a lot like Shasta, and back 7,700 years ago, it erupted, and it erupted so much of its magma in the chamber below the mountain that nothing held up the mountain anymore, and it collapsed in on itself. Over the centuries following that, the snowfall and the rainfall filled up this crater caused by the volcano imploding, and that's how we have Crater Lake today. In the middle of Crater Lake is Wizard Island, and Wizard Island is a cinder cone that formed after the formation of the lake. It erupted again and formed the cinder cone in the middle of the lake, which is really cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. It has a volcano within a volcano, pretty much, and yeah. it just makes it all that much more stunning. We were really hoping to go swimming in Crater Lake, although it would have been freezing. But unfortunately, because of the snow, the only trail that goes down to the lake was about 20 miles through the snowpack and closed. During the summer months, they do run boat tours out to Wizard Island and out onto the lake, which would be really awesome to do as well. So the Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway goes around the rim of Crater Lake, which of course we couldn't do because of the snow, but that's where it officially ends, just north of Crater Lake. We came up to Bend and found ourselves still tracing the Pacific Ring of Fire and found yet another volcanic national monument here. It's called the Newberry National Volcanic Ma Monument and we stopped by there today and learned a little bit more about this area which also has a huge volcano that erupted many 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 years ago and um, has a lot of offshoots and cinder cones. They said there are like 500 cinder cones around the outside of the Newberry volcano. They also have a lot of really unique features similar to what we've seen before. The lava flows, the lava tubes, they have a giant obsidian flow which is beautiful black glass that has that formed out of the volcano. It's a silica based lava basically. And nearby there's Mount Bachelor and the Three Sisters and Mount Hood just up the way. There is so much volcanic activity around here that makes the geology of this area so amazing and we had no idea before we came here and we weren't really familiar with Lassen and lava beds they're not as popular as say Yellowstone or something like that but they are a really amazing places to visit so if you want to visit these places and drive the Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway you can go online to www.volcanicscenicbyway.org or you can stop by any of the visitor center. They'll give you this awesome map that shows you the entire drive all the way from California to Oregon. Of course, if you stop at any of the national monuments, stop at the visitor centers as well. You'll learn so much. They'll also provide you with really great pamphlets and information, and it is such an amazing educational tour. We learned so, so much along the way. This is just a brief overview, and we definitely recommend doing this drive. We had a great time, and it's just amazing. Thank you so much for joining us on our overview of the Volcanic Legacy Scenic Byway. We're the Mortons on the Move. We travel the country in our RV right now, finding amazing things like this and sharing them with you. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, because we'd love to have you along for our journey. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.